All right. Hey, good morning, Northwoods. My name's Hope, and this is my dog, Wicket. And on one of these sides of me is Jason Lee, and we are so excited to be here with you this morning for Church This Sunday. Absolutely. You know, I hope uh, even when we're geographically distant, you're at your house, I'm at my house, we're still able to attend church together this weekend. I'm so excited about that. And I'm so excited that all of our campuses are opening back up again next weekend. So people can start to make plans to join us on any of our campuses, or if they're not quite ready to join us at one of our campuses, I would encourage people to start thinking about who you might invite into your living room or your backyard or wherever you can um, attend church and uh, do Northwoods Online with us with other people because it's church is about community. So uh, figure out a way to, to connect with other people. Yeah, for sure. And one of the easiest ways to connect with people is actually just by joining the chat. Um, you can just go in there and say hi, maybe give somebody a virtual high five. <laughs> and um, yeah, just get to know people. You can ask questions. You can request prayer. Um, it's just an awesome place to just interact with others while you're watching church this weekend. Um, and actually, if you're somebody who really loves interacting and being engaged in the chat, we are always looking for people to help host those services online. So we actually are onboarding a couple right now who live in Ecuador. So you don't even have to live in central Illinois to be able to serve. You can just go online to northwoods.church slash opportunities and find a place to serve either online or on any of our campuses. Absolutely. Because like, you know, COVID's been crazy for a lot of things. And that part of that's just a challenge to be able to serve at Northwoods in a normal way. And so I keep telling people, don't feel like you have to be benched from the dream team. You can serve on Northwoods Online, no matter where you're attending from, whether that's Ecuador or Central Illinois or anywhere in between. Uh, so definitely check out the Opportunities Finders. We'd love to have you serve in our team. Well, the worship team has an awesome service planned. Pastor John has a great message. I know you're going to enjoy that. So Hope and I are ready to get you back over to Peoria. So Northwoods Online starts right now. Sing out with us in your homes. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along. You put me
out his spirit on your family, in your neighborhood, in this state, in this nation. He is our only hope. He's our only hope, a revival from heaven to set our hearts on fire for you, Lord. Set our hearts on fire for you, Lord. Pour out your spirit today in our day, Lord. As you've done before, would you do it again? There's no prison wall you can't break through, no mountain you can't move, all things are possible. There's no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save, all things are possible. All things are possible. Thank you, Lord. Give you the praise. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. You're here. Beautiful name.
Well, good morning, Northwoods, and it's so great to worship together, to join you in your homes or wherever you are gathering together to worship, and uh, just great again to sing his praises and to give him the worship that he deserves. My name is Gary, one of the pastors here at Northwoods, and really my privilege is to join you for just a few minutes to give you some ministry updates, to welcome you and say thank you for joining us today, and uh, give you uh, just a, a few pieces of news uh, for you. Well, first of all, as you are uh, meeting wherever you are, pull out your phone, go to your app, and use the connection card feature to let us know you're there, to join us, to uh, make requests, whatever you need or would like to let us know. Use that whenever we gather. And it's a great way to connect with us so that we know what you need, what you're thinking about, what you like. All of that is available there. Also, while you're there, use the app to give. You know, our ministries operate solely on your sacrificial, generous, and gracious giving, and you can use the app for that as well. And as I'm speaking of giving, I just want to say thank you for that, because without your faithful giving, throughout this season and throughout the years, our ministries would shudder. And so uh, we make that available not only uh, through the app, but you can go to our website, northwoods.church forward slash give. And as always, you can give through the mail and uh, we also have giving boxes and so forth throughout our facility that can be accessed. So we're doing our best to make both digital as well as just old fashioned uh, in-person options available to you. Well, I have some great news for you that haven't heard already. We are planning to reopen for in-person services here in the, at the Peoria campus and in Canton starting next weekend, September 6th. And so we're excited about that and uh, very, very glad and uh, uh, thankful that the, the bit of a COVID scare that we had among our staff is behind us. All is well. The staff are doing great, and we're grateful for that. So uh, we open that up on the 6th, as well as a couple days later, on Tuesday the 8th, we will open our facilities for um, in-person, we'll open our, our buildings for uh, in-person visits or whatever you need, as well as our ministries weeknights and weekdays. So that's important information for you. And check out our website or contact your ministry leaders because many of the ministries that we offer during the week also have some virtual options that are attached to them. So pay attention to that, and I think that will be helpful for those of you that just cannot uh, be here in person. So anyway, September 6th and 8th, very important dates for us to, um, to remember. Also, just keep in mind that for any questions or resources you may be looking for, Northwoods Online is the way to go. Just come to our website and you can find all sorts of resources available to you. You can not only join our weekend services that many of, your, uh, many of you are doing right now, but also archive messages, uh, resources from the past that are there, and you can use those as well. So it's, a, it's really our final resource. We offer so much in a variety of ways digitally, but that is the place to go. So be sure to check that out if you have any questions or are looking for assistance in any way. Well, you know, as we move into this season of uh, dealing with this virus and there's just so, so much about that that's hard to understand, hard to process, hard to know, a lot of confusion. One thing that hasn't changed is our mission as a church, and that is that we, uh, we want to invite broken world people to experience complete freedom in Christ Jesus. Inviting broken world people. And are we in a broken world today or what? Well, this week I was... As I was reading scripture, this passage came to mind. It's short, I'll be quick. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. And let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing. But let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. Some very strong words read from Hebrews chapter 11, or 10, excuse me. And in that passage, we not only read the importance of gathering together, 
but also how important it is as we approach the day of the Lord, the, the coming return of Jesus Christ, and all of that, what that means. And so as you're just interacting with your neighbors and friends, coworkers, wherever you may be, um, don't, don't lose sight of our mission, inviting broken world people to experience Jesus Christ in all his fullness and all his freedom. Let me pray for us. God, we are so grateful for your incredible faithfulness to us in this season that we find so many questions and maybe not a lot of answers, so much turmoil. We pray over our nation, our friends, our family, our communities. God, so much to pray for in these times. And so help us, uh, encourage us, strengthen us, and may we do our part to be faithful to you, to always remember to gather together, to, to do that in ways that, that you allow us to do so that we may lead others to you in the saving knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that I pray, amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you again for being with us today. Hey, Northwoods, thanks for joining us today. Hope you are all doing well. For those of you joining through our Galesburg and Chillicothe campuses live, I want to throw a shout out to you guys. Hope you are all doing well. And for those of us who are watching online, our Peoria and our Canton campuses, like Gary just said in our announcements, we are looking forward to being back in person next Sunday, September 6th. Looking forward to it. And before I hop into where we're headed today, I just wanted to make one quick announcement. There were a few people that reached out last week when one of our partners, Kirk Nowry, was here with us. And Kirk uh, rescues, their, part of their ministry is rescuing little girls uh, from being sold into slavery, basically. And they, they rescue them, bring them into their compound, take care of them, give them an education. And so there is always a way that you can sponsor one of those girls, they're always looking for people to sponsor a girl. And there were some people that were a little bit confused about where to go to do that. And just wanted to make sure you knew if you would like to sponsor one of the girls that Kirk Nowry over there in northern India is helping to take care of, you can go to hopepartners.org and use their website. And that's where you can, uh, it's up there on the screen, you can sponsor one of those girls if you would like to. Well, a few years back, my wife and I were on the hunt for some children's music that we could play in the car for our daughters. So naturally, we started looking for music that sang about the Bible or God, because if I'm going to get something stuck in my children's head, I want it to be God's word. And eventually, a family member recommended this guy named Randall Goodgame. So we started checking out some of his stuff, and I'm telling you what, this dude is legit. Like, he's one of the few children's music artists that I can listen to and not cringe. And one of, him, one of his albums, all he does is sing Bible verses, and it's actually, like, good. Like, I sometimes just listen to it in the car. And if you have kids and you're looking for some biblically-based music to add to your playlist... Check out Sing the Bible with Slugs and Bugs by Randall Goodgame. But anyways, we play this for our kids a lot, and you know they have their favorite songs. Uh, but in playing for them, but in playing, for, playing it for them, most of the time the songs end up getting stuck in my head. And I'm one of those guys that when I get something stuck in my head, like it's, it's on repeat the whole day. My wife calls me a broken record because I just sing one line over and over the entire day. She's like, okay, if you're gonna keep singing, can you at least sing the entire song or the next line? Like, get off that one line for the whole day, please. I mean, some of the people I work with here uh, at Northwoods would probably say that about me too. But sometimes one of those scripture songs will get so stuck in my head that eventually it'll work its way into my heart. Did you know that what you, what you let into your head up here will work its way into your heart? 
And church, for a moment, can I just tell you, that's, that's why it's so important, especially during this time, that we're not fixating our minds on the daily news headlines, the latest political rhetoric, or the newest COVID updates. We most, must fix our minds on the truth of God's word. I'm not saying bury your head in the sand. I'm saying let this be the loudest voice in your life. You know, it was Finnis Drake who wrote a tribute to the Bible and says, God's word contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. And when we fix our mind on God's word and let his voice be the loudest, we will find direction, support, and comfort in these times. But one of the songs that worked its way into my heart is a song that's called What is the Book? And it's really a song that sings all the way through Psalm 139. And Psalm 139 is 24 verses long. It was written by King David. And in this psalm, we are reminded of who God is, that he's not beyond our reach, he's knowable, he's available, and he's real. And as this passage has got into my heart and I've spent time with this passage of scripture, I found it's almost like, as you're reading through it, it's almost like having a Q&A with King David. It's like having a Q&A with a king about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Because as we look at this chapter today, we find that it answers four questions that I think we at all times, at, at some times in our life, we're looking for answers to these questions. Questions like, does God know me? Is God near to me? Does God have a purpose for my life? Anybody listening today feel like COVID has just robbed your purpose this time that we're living in? Find yourself, does God have a purpose for my life? Another question, can God handle my frustrations? So we read through Psalm 139, it's like having a Q&A and we find that David answers, goes right down and answers some of the questions that we deal with at times. So I wanna encourage you right now, if you have your Bible nearby or the Bible app on your phone, I wanna encourage you to open it up, open up the app and go to Psalm 139, turn the page, swipe there, whatever you gotta do. And let's just, I just wanna encourage you today from God's word. So let's jump in and have a little Q&A with the king. The first question, does God know me? Now the other day I was outside with my daughter and I was doing something on the deck and, and she was sitting on the swing set playing in the backyard and out of the blue, she goes, Dad, does God know me? Wow, that's kind of a profound question for a four-year-old. Yes, God knows you, Ariana. He knows your name. He knows what makes you happy, what makes you sad. He knows what you like, what you dislike. And then she said, okay, well, then I'll, I'll just marry him. I was like, okay, sure, all right, good. <laughs> but this is really a question that gets at, does my life matter? Am I important? To God, And here's why I get to that, because to truly know someone, I think somewhere deep down, we must believe that they're worth knowing. I mean, think about it. If I didn't care about you, if, if you weren't important to me, I'm certainly not going to take the time to get to know you on a deeper level. But in this psalm, David makes the case that God believes that my life and your life are massively significant. Why? Because God knows us better than anyone else. Look at what he says in Psalm 139 verses 1 through 4. He says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, Know it completely. As we read that in these verses, we find that God is omniscient. Omniscient, just a big theological word that means all knowing. God knows everything about everything. 
And beyond that, he knows everything about you and me. He knows us so well that he knows our thoughts. He knows what we're going to say before we say it. Can I remind you today that God knows you? He sees you in this time. He knows your name. About a month ago, Michaela and I had to get new internet. And so we called the internet company out to the house and they came out and they obviously, you know, they run their cable to our house to pipe in the internet, fiber optic cable. I was so happy. Finally, it's like internet that's fast. So we pipe it into the house. They pipe it in the house, but before they could bury the cable in the yard, they had to call in a city worker, right, who had access to the plans for our yard and could mark off where things were buried. So a couple days later, this city worker comes out, and I mean, he marked up our yard. There's yellow spray paint over here with yellow flags everywhere. There's red spray paint over here with red flags. There's orange spray paint right here with orange flags every, everywhere. I mean, it took me like 30 minutes just to move those flags for a little bit before I could mow and put them back. I mean, it was a job. But by the time he was done putting all these flags in spray paint, I knew where the gas lines were buried, where the electrical lines were buried. I even knew where the septic pipe that runs out of my house into the septic tank was. I mean, he literally knew where everything was buried in my yard. Now, if you think about that, that's amazing that someone knows exactly where things are located under our yard. You see, I thought I knew my yard well. But this city worker not only knew my yard, the exact dimensions of it, but he knew what was under my yard. He knew about the things that were not visible to the eye. You know, it's no different with God. He knows everything about our life, even that which is not able to be seen by others. In fact, there is nothing in your life right now that would surprise God. He knows our deepest fears. He knows our hurts. He knows our faults. He knows our struggles. Like the Bible says, he knows the exact number of hairs on our head. Now, some of you are saying, well, that's not hard because I'm bald, but for some of us that got a lot of hair, that's, that's a hard thing to know, right? He knows the exact number of hairs on our head. The creator of the universe knows you. I don't know about you, but that says that my life is incredibly significant no matter how I feel. My life is incredibly significant because the creator of the universe knows me. Some of us need to be reminded today that you are the object of the living God's attention every moment of every day. He loves you. I want to encourage you to focus on that today that you are loved by God. Focus on that. So does God know me? Totally. Better than anyone else on this earth will ever know you. That leads us to the next question. Is God near to me? See, a lot of people believe that God exists, but that he's just kind of out there and isn't directly involved in the everyday happenings of our world and our lives. I mean, you ever just kind of look around at what's happening, even in just our country, and find yourself saying, God, where are you? Like, look at what's going on. Where are you, God? You ever find yourself asking that question? Well, if so, I want you to look at what David goes on to say in verse seven. He says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand 
will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. So in other words, if we were to ask David, is God near to me? Is God near to us? David says, well, if you could go to the highest place, heaven, or the lowest place, the grave, even in those places and everywhere in between, God is there. He also says if we could ride the wings of the morning, almost referring to the rays of sunlight, saying everywhere the sun touches, God is there. In fact, if you were to read these verses in Hebrew, which is the language they were written in, it would literally sound like this, and it's a little bit more emphatic. If I go up to heaven, thou, like thou art there. If I go down to the grave, thou. If I ride the wings of the morning, thou. If I go to the farthest ocean, thou. God is near. Now, the last verse we looked at showed us that God is omniscient or all-knowing. And these verses show us that God is omnipresent. Just another word that means there is no place we could go where God is is not there with us. God is near to you and to me. Remember when my daughter Ariana was really little, she's, she's, she's four now, but before she even turned one, I remember there were times where she would just play. You, could, you know, you could put her in a room, she would just play with her little toys and crawl around and she'd be pretty pleasant as long as she knew that you were in the room with her. See, at that stage, being able to physically see someone in the room, having someone near, helped her to feel comforted. But I can remember there were some times where I was in the same room with her, literally in the same room. But for whatever reason, I got out of her line of sight. And when that happened, it's like she would immediately drop whatever toys she was playing with, her peace would evaporate, and she would just start crying because she thought I had left the room. She thought dad was no longer near. When in actuality, I was still in the room. She had just lost sight of me. And I think back on those times, and sometimes it reminds me of my relationship with God and that sometimes I'm like little one-year-old Ariana. As long as I can see what appears to be evidence of God being near, you know, like things are going well for me. Things in our country are stable. As long as I can see what I think is evidence of God around me, well, then God is near, and I'm good. But sometimes... There are happenings in our life and around us. And let's just be honest, there have been a lot lately that trick us into believing that God is no longer in the room. And as soon as we don't see what we believe to be evidence of God being near, bad things happening to good people, a virus shutting things down, division splitting our nation, well then I guess that must mean that God has left the room. And we start to fall apart. But here's the truth. Just because we can't see and feel what we think is evidence of God around us does not mean that God has left the room. Church, let me remind you, God has not left us. He's here. And he's near to you and to me even when it doesn't feel like it. One of my favorite authors used to say, God is most active when he appears most silent. And even when it feels like God is out of sight, what, is the, what, is the, what does God's word tell us? It tells us that we are to walk by faith and not by sight. We put our trust in what God says, and God said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So how near is God to me? How near is God to you? close enough to reach out and touch. We just forget that at times. So rest your mind and your heart on on the fact that God knows you and he is near to you. 
He has not left us. Leads us to another question, does God have a purpose for my life? And again, I feel like a lot of people, I found myself even struggling with this at times during this COVID crisis. It feels like almost sometimes we feel like our purpose has been put on the shelf because things have just gotten shut down. It's like, what am I doing? Well, look back to Psalm 139. In my opinion, this section of scripture is one of the most incredible in all of the Bible. In it, David gives us a glimpse of just how much intention and purpose went into us. He says in verse 13 through 16, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. And I love how David describes how God knit us together, how God has created us. It says he knit me together and he has woven me together. You know, a couple years back before our daughter was born, and I think I even showed this on stage, but one of the gifts that we got, and, and I found that people do this a lot when you have children, right, is they will, they will make blankets for you. So we were given a blanket that a friend had knitted and, and woven together. And again, I showed this to you a couple years ago, but I just wanted to show it to you again because I believe it's a great reminder. Now, I've never knitted something. I don't, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I don't know the process. But I got a pretty good feeling that there was intentional thought and great care and some serious time put into making this blanket. And I'm 100% sure that this didn't just happen on accident. I mean, you don't get this from a ball of yarn on accident. Somebody planned this. There was a purpose for which this was made. And when David speaks of you knit me together and I was woven together, he's saying that not only is God the creator of all human life, but there was intentional thought, planning in care when God created you. When God created you, it was no accident. Why? Because you don't get this on accident. No matter what you think about yourself, the creator of the universe knit you together exactly the way you are. And he has a purpose and a plan for your life. No matter what stage of life you might be in, you are a child of God created specifically by him and God has a purpose for your life. Now as we talk about purpose, I want you to look back at what David said because he said, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now I find this to be an incredibly comforting thought and especially in the days we find ourselves living in. Now none of us knows how many days we get on this earth, but God does. He has an ordained number of years, days, hours, and seconds that we'll spend on this earth. And just so you know, coronavirus has not changed what he has ordained for your life. Now, can we shorten what God has ordained? I think so. God has a plan and purpose and has ordained this many days for my life, but if I were to eat donuts for every meal and McDonald's for every meal, I'm pretty sure I could shorten that. <laughs> it's just the reality. But God has a plan and has an ordained number of days for each of us. Now I know for many of us we don't like to think about death. Why would we? 
That's not exactly the cheeriest thought. But I believe that we can find great comfort and securing security in knowing that God has so ordered our lives that if we are walking in his purpose for our life, we can be free from the fear of what might happen to us. Because if we're walking in his purpose, under his covering, I don't, I don't have to fear because anything that's going to come to my life has to first pass through him. Doesn't mean that bad things won't ever happen. Doesn't mean that God won't allow things into my life that it might make me uncomfortable. But it's incredibly freeing to know that, you know what, if I'm walking in your purpose for my life, God, there's nothing coming to me that isn't first coming through you. I want you to think about it like this. When my daughters are living under my roof, my house, they don't have a lot to worry about or fear. I mean, they don't have to worry about if they're gonna get to eat. They don't have to worry or fear about not having a place to sleep. They don't have to worry about not having clothes on their back. You know, when they're living under dad's care and protection, there's not a lot to worry or fear. But let's pretend, and God forbid, but let's just pretend that they were to run away from my house come out from under my roof, my covering. Well, then they got something to worry about. Where's the next meal coming from? Don't know. Where am I gonna lay my head at night? Don't know. Who's gonna protect me when I'm out in the street? Don't know. And it's the same with us. When we're living under our Father, our Heavenly Father's covering and walking in His purpose there is no need to worry or fear not only do we have eternal life assured with him but in this life we're under his care and his protection remember a couple weeks back just maybe it was it was two weeks ago my dad said our senior pastor the safest place you can be is walking in God's purpose for your life we don't have to to fear, church, if we're walking with the Lord and we're walking according to his plan and his purpose, we're under his covering. I love what the writer of Hebrews said in Hebrews 2. He said, since the children have flesh and blood, he too, meaning Jesus, shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Church, the power of him who holds the power of death has been broken through Jesus Christ. We've been set free from the fear of death. Those chains are gone. So yes, while we're gonna be wise when it comes to the days that we're living in, we're not gonna be those who fall back and cower in fear because that is not our identity in Jesus Christ. We are those who rise up and walk with courage because we know we're walking in God's purposes for our life and under his covering. We do not have to walk in fear. When you feel fear rise up, you speak to that fear. You say, God has not given me a spirit of fear. That's not who I am as a child of God. He's given me a spirit of power and of love and of self and of a sound mind. Come on, church, we're not those who fear because we know when we're walking in God's purposes for our life, we're under his protection and his care. So does God have a purpose for my life? Absolutely. And when we walk in it, worry and fear begin to fall. Last question, can God handle my frustrations? You know, the last couple of months, on many occasions, I found myself frustrated. Frustrated about how this virus has changed my plans and altered how I envisioned 2020 going. Frustrated with the political unrest. Frustrated with the injustice we see in our country. Frustrated with the extreme division. I'm frustrated. I mean, any of you there? I think a lot of us are. 
Well, if you look back to Psalm 139, we find that near the end of this psalm, it kind of takes a disturbing turn. And there have been times where I've preached this psalm, I've actually preached this psalm before to our students, and uh, when I got to this part of the psalm, I just kind of skipped over it, (laughs) because I didn't want to deal with it. Uh, But I want you to look at what David says in verses 19 through 22. He says, if only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. You know, I read that I'm like, man, this Psalm 139, it's amazing. You know, talking about how he, he knows us and he, he's near and he cares for us. Then it's like, kill the wicked, God. Like, whoa, what happened, David? <laughs> Yikes, slay the wicked. I have nothing but hatred. What's going on? Well, let's keep in mind a couple of things. First, David is not talking about his enemies. He's talking about God's enemies, those who hate the Lord and oppose God. But secondly, David was a man of war. He was a warrior. And so in his zeal for God and righteousness, you see his language kind of reflect his warrior background. But even in keeping those two in mind, let's be honest, the words stand in stark contrast to Jesus' words, to love our enemies. And so there is a part of us that is left to wrestle and kind of struggle with trying to understand what is going on here. And while I don't have all the answers, what I do know and what seems apparent to me is that these words seem to express David's truly raw and painful honesty. His words remind us that struggle, conflict, and frustration in this life are real. You better believe that David experienced hurt and pain and anger in his life. I think we find he reacted before God with all the feelings and frustration he was experiencing. Which tells me this, if God could handle David's frustration... He can certainly handle mine and handle yours. But how many times in our frustration and our anger, instead of running to God, do we try to take matters into our own hands? We see something and it just angers us and there's things going on in our country that should, it should cause frustration and anger. But what happens is sometimes we just lash out and we end up hurting someone. We run to social media and we vent our anger and frustration with the world and we end up picking fights with people we don't even know. But God says, come to me. I can handle your anger, your pain, your frustration. Bring that to me and place that in my hands. And let me handle the outcome. Yes, there's a role we can play, but we always start with saying, God, I'm gonna bring my frustration, my anger, my pain to you. And you know what? Some of you might say, well, what if my anger and my pain and my frustration is with God? Well, you know what? He can handle that too. He already knows. Bring your frustration to him. Place it in his hands. Let me ask you, are you frustrated with how things are going in your life? Can I encourage you to bring it to God today? Don't just stuff everything inside. Bring it to the Lord. Remember what Jesus said. He said in Matthew, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Feeling weary and burdened today. Come to me and I will give you you rest some of us have been so frustrated with how things are going in our life and we've been turning everywhere but to God 
turn to God. He says, come to me and I'll give you rest. Psalm 139 shows us, does God know me? Yes, he knows us intimately. Is God near to me? Yes, he is here with you this very moment. Does God have a purpose for our life? Yes, and coronavirus has not changed that, and we have no need to fear, and can God handle my frustrations? Absolutely. And So as we close, I just want to pray for you, and I want to encourage you this week, let God's word be the loudest voice in your life. I want to encourage you, if you're not already doing this, start your day in God's word. Because you know what? Things are constantly shifting, constantly changing in our country and in our lives right now. And you know what? If, if that's the loudest voice in your mind, you're going to be disoriented. You're not going to have a lot of peace. But this thing says God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so let's rest our mind and our heart on his word. And I promise you, if you center yourself on that, you're going to find peace. So let me pray for you. So Lord, again, we just thank you for your word and we thank you how when we put your words into practice and we rest our mind and our heart on your word, that no matter what comes our way in this life, no matter what the storms bring, that we're gonna be able to stand because we're standing on your word. I thank you for your reminder today that you, that you love us, you know us. I thank you that you're here with us, you have not left us. I thank you that we still have a purpose, Father. And Lord, for anyone listening today dealing with fear, we just bind that spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus, and I pray you would replace it with your peace. And I pray a spirit of love and power and a sound mind would rise up in us today, Lord. And thank you that you can handle our frustrations, and we can bring those to you, and it doesn't offend you. Thank you for that, Lord. I just pray your peace, your blessing over everyone listening today and help us to let your word be the loudest voice in our life during these times. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, church. Well, hey, thanks again for listening today and I'm looking forward to being back in the room together next Sunday, September 6th. Have a great week. Distance, longing to give and taste forgiveness, dying to live a pure.